Okay, this is going to be me uh, solving the um, Chapter 7 uh, non-conserved work sledding problem that we did in class, or we, we actually uh, introduced in class, I didn't actually solve it in class. Um, so I just wanted to give you a chance to see how you would actually go about solving this. Um, so uh, if you remember this, uh, basically this uh, Calvin, this tobogganer, basically starting from rest top of a hill and going down um, a certain slope. Um, so if I just bring up, so... Um, and I'll just do a picture. Um, he's going to start, so we're going to do a slope. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm doing red. Um, so he starts at the top of a slope. Um, and the distance of the slope is 1300 meters and it's 230 meters high is basically what I'm saying. Um, so first thing we're asking is how fast uh, would Calvin be going if there's no friction? I just a couple of things I want to set up. Um, first uh, I'm just going to use uh, um, for right now I'm just going to use our normal coordinate system um, uh, I'm not tilting my um, coordinate system at this moment just, just because um, uh, with energy it often just makes more sense to kind of keep our normal ones. Um, uh, and then uh, we're basically asking, and, and I'm going to call this point y equals zero. Okay, basically the bottom of the hill is going to be y equals zero. So for the first part, if we want to see how fast should it be going if there was no friction, Let's set up our energy equation. Okay. And then this, of course, is just potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial. So you go potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Um, again, uh, he's starting from at rest from the top, so we know that there should be no kinetic energy initially. And because I called the bottom of the hill zero, and that's where it's going to end at the end, um, we're going to have um, zero potential energy at the end. Now, I haven't put friction in this, but that's because I've explicitly said in part A that it doesn't have any friction. So then we're just going to get mg um, y initial is equal to one half mv squared final. Um, the masses are going to cancel out. By the way, you can only cancel those masses if you have an M on every single term. I mean, you'll see later that that doesn't always work. Um, okay, so we're going to multiply by 2 and take the square root, and we just get that V final is equal to 2GY initial square root, or the square root of um, of 2 times 9.8 9, 9 meters per second squared. Uh, times uh, 230 meters. All right, so that's going to be the answer. We can go ahead and try um, plugging that into the calculator, and we can get. Um, oh, sorry. Two times 230. Okay, and we get something like. 667 meters per second, which is really fast. And right, you know that, that that's not how fast people tend to go on slides. All right, that's 130 miles an hour. Um, people don't go that fast on slides. Um, now, I asked in part B how much energy was dissipated by friction. Well, what you find is that um, if we actually go and try to look at the energy, again, if you look at the um, at uh, at the energy um, coming from this equation, you notice that if we actually plug in the correct value for Vf, which I said was 12 meters per second, all right, um, that we're not going to get any quality. So we're going to find that the um, that the the this that the second energy, the final energy, is less than the initial energy. Again, that's because we've actually lost energy to friction. So now we need to include um, this work non-conserved term. So uh, if we go ahead and get our energy equation again, 
energy initial is equal to energy final. Now I'm going to say that the potential energy initial plus the work not conserved is equal to the kinetic energy final. Okay. And now that we do that, now we can see that we have um, mgy initial plus work non conserved is equal to one half mv final squared. Now you notice I cannot cancel out the m's this time because there's no m in the work non conserved term. Uh, let's go ahead and solve for work non conserved. It's just equal to one half mv final squared minus mgy initial. Um, I can go ahead and try to plug that in. I apologize, I haven't checked these uh, numbers ahead of time, so if I make any calculators or calculator errors, I apologize. Um, So we find that the work non-conserved, uh, and it is, it turns out it is negative in this case, it just has to do with the fact that, the, um, that you're losing energy um, from the left side, um, is minus 43,640 joules. Okay, so now we got that uh, part B. We want what the average force of friction is on the tobogganer. We know that the work um, work is always just equal to force times distance times the cosine of the angle between the two of them. Now, of course, the the um, if we look back up here at the uh, at the picture, we're going this way. That's our distance, and our force of friction is back that way. So our force of friction is opposite the distance that we're going. So the angle is just going to be 180, and that's basically where we're going to get that um, that negative uh, one uh, um, in here. So we're going to get minus 43,640 is equal to the force of friction uh, minus the force of friction, because the cosine of 180 is going to be negative one, minus the force of friction times the distance traveled. Again, this is the distance traveled. This isn't the, the height. This is the total distance over which the sled traveled. And again, the sled travels from the top the whole way down here to the bottom. And so that distance is 1,300 meters. And so if we just divide this by 13, yeah. we get that the average force of friction is equal to 33. 0.6 newtons. Um, to get the coefficient of friction, all right, so that's that's kind of the end of that. Um, uh, to get the coefficient of friction between the toboggan and the snow, we're going to have to do a free body diagram. So if we look at the free body diagram, we have the normal force this way. We have the force of friction going this way. We have the force of gravity going this way. And that's it. Um, if we look at this free body diagram, uh, we see that um, to get the, f we already have the force of friction. What we need right now is the fact that to force of friction is always equal to mu, the coefficient of friction, so this kinetic friction in this case, uh, times the normal force. We don't know what that normal force is right now. Um, but we can um, try to match my how I'm writing this. Um, but we can find it if we just look at the y component of uh, of the our force diagram. So I'm going to use now these rotated axes. If I just look at the sum of forces in the y direction. I get that the normal force minus FGY is equal to um, 
is equal to zero, it's not accelerating in the y direction, or that the normal force is just equal to fgy. Now fgy, if you look again, we do our normal trick, we call this theta, this is fgy, so fgy is just fg sine of theta. Now we don't actually know what that angle is, uh, but the angle again is is just the angle of this, if you look up here, that is just this angle of this slope. We can actually find the angle of that slope by just realizing, let me just do a little side, a side, which is that if I look at the um, sine of that angle, sine of theta, that's just equal to 230 divided by 1300 meters. So I can actually find theta And that turns out that's just equal to 10.2 degrees. So if I come in and I plug that in here, I get FG is just equal is just equal to mg. FG is always equal to mg, and then this is just sine of 10.2 degrees. If I go ahead and plug my number in, I get um, uh, the mass, which is the 20 kilograms. Gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, and then I have the sine of 10.2 degrees. So I'll go ahead and take um, 20 times 9.8 times sine of 10.2, make sure we're in degrees, and I get that this is equal to the normal force now, which is what we've been solving for the whole time, 34.7 newtons. Okay, that's the normal force. Then if I bring this equation the whole way down, the force of friction is just equal to the mu k times the normal force. Well, I have force of friction up here, just 33.6 newtons. So I get 33.6 newtons is equal to mu k times 34.7 newtons. So if I just Find that out. I get that mu k is equal to 0.97, which is actually a little high for a toboggan with snow. Um, so hopefully I've got those numbers correct. So that's that. Um, uh, I have a couple of little bonus questions, which is if he goes off a four meter cliff, with what speed does he hit the ground? All right, let's just do that over here. Uh, let's actually let's let's not do that because I want to make sure that I can fit this on one page. So let's if he goes up a cliff. So now he's coming off a cliff. Um, did I assume that he's coming off the cliff at an angle? He goes off of a four meter cliff. I don't really say. Um, I guess we're assuming I'm still going 12 meters per second when I go off the cliff. So it looks something like this. And then he goes off the cliff, still going 12 meters per second. I think that's what I probably meant by the way that I solved that. And this distance is 4 meters. So if that's the case, you get, again, energy initial as you go out energy final, or um, one half mv initial squared plus mgh initial is equal to one half mv final squared. Again, this time all the masses cancel out. Um, and we get, uh, we get, let's see, one and a half times 12 meters per second squared plus 9.8 times the height, which is four meters. Um, and we have to multiply that all by two and take the square root of everything. And that will give us V final. I just did a bunch of algebra there. 
Um, let's see if I can get being um, my calculator is actually almost dead. Uh, so let's see if I can get this. Um, five times seventeen. Uh, times twelve plus nine point eight times four and then take the square root of that answer and we get something like and uh, that can't be right. Um, oh, I forgot to multiply by two. Okay, and there we go. We get to the V final is equal to 14.9 meters per second. And for part D, we are for part F. Um, we're asking how much, how deep does the snow have to be for him not to get hurt? I'm not going to do this part, but basically you saw this the same way that we did it in class when we did the um, the problem of the guys falling out of the plane. Uh, it's basically the same problem. Um, so I hope that was at least semi-helpful. Um, I will post this whole sheet uh, online um, on Moodle, and hopefully they'll help you. Uh, thanks a lot, and then ask me if you have any questions uh, uh, when you come to class.